What's up everybody? I'm doing this uh, little video on basic metallurgy and uh, heat treating for Sugar Creek Forges build along. I just wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about um, heat treating and what actually happens and the reason that it has to be done in order to make uh, an effective blade or a tool or whatever. But uh, <clears throat> I printed out a couple of charts so maybe you can get kind of a basic idea. <clears throat> iron, you know, is a mixture of, I mean, steel is a mixture of iron and carbon. Now, these representations like this are good for just describing things, but in actuality, you know, matrices look a lot different than this. <clears throat> for instance, this is like, this is a body-centered cubic structure of ferrite, which would be like a steel at room temperature where you have an atom on all four corners at the top, all four corners at the bottom, and one in the center. This is a body-centered cubic structure. It's actually a tight, tightly packed um, molecular crystal, and there is a... These atoms are actually shared by the next adjacent crystal. So it actually looks a little bit different, but for our practical purposes, this, this will work to describe it. But anyway, this is a, a really, really tight pack structure, like I said. When you heat it up, it changes to something called austenite. Oh, and by the way, like in this state as the ferrite, you've got little, you know, carbon atoms throughout the steel, depending on the carbon content of the steel. But this being a really, really tight packed structure, the carbon really can't enter this matrix. Over here, when you heat it up, it transforms into something called austenite, which is a face center cubic structure. <coughs> what really happens is this uh, lattice expands greatly compared to this one. And you get, you know, as well as having the atoms on all eight corners of this box you have one on each face all right there there's nothing in the middle I'm, i don't believe I'm, I'm not positive about that but i don't believe there is but i know this is a very very highly expanded version of this on a molecular basis okay so when this happens when it expands like that the carbon atoms that are outside here just floating around can actually enter into this matrix okay so in this state the iron is soluble to the carbon the carbon will actually enter into the matrix okay so what happens really is when you <coughs> when you cool this is a time and temperature chart. There's one for every different steel type, but just as a generalization. What happens when you cool the, the steel at a really rapid rate, this right here is what you get with a, a martensite structure. When that structure collapses back into a body-centered cubic structure, all those carbon atoms that have entered it are trapped inside of there. And since they're trapped inside there, <clears throat> the, at the crystal lattice has a lot of strain on it. And that stress condition is what actually makes the steel hard. But it, by the same token, it's extremely brittle because of that hardness. When you temper your steel, you're actually allowing some of the carbon atoms to escape, to escape and therefore relaxing the structure a little bit. But any steel that you heat treat, you can get this chart for. And what's important is, you see this nose right here? This is like, usually called the perlite nose. If you quench the steel from the austenization temperature in the time requirement, to miss the nose of this curve, 
then martensite will form. Notice it doesn't start forming immediately. This one's in Celsius. I couldn't find one in Fahrenheit, but the martensite start temperature is this red line right down here. It doesn't start, excuse me, until about um four or five hundred degrees Fahrenheit. If you hold that temperature right above martensite start, you'll get another structure of steel called bainite. You can get upper or lower bainite, which is a really, really good uh, compromise between hardness and toughness. It's, a, it's an alternative to a, a, a tempered martensite, and it, it really works good on a lot of blades, especially big blades. <laughs> but uh, another thing, <coughs> this is an iron carbon phase diagram. It has your uh, your temperatures over here and your carbon content over, down here. Everything past this line is cast iron. Anything over 2% carbon is cast iron. Right here in the very center, you have the eutectoid line, which is 0.83 to 84% carbon. 1084 is eutectic steel which means that this line is the temperature, the lower transformation temperature. This is where your steel is going to lose its magnetism. And you'll notice that this line does not change at all for the amount of carbon in the steel. This line, however, this is the upper transformation temperature line. It does change. So the quench temperature that you should quench any given steel at is different. The only one that you should actually quench precisely at non-magnetic is 1084. Now above this line in carbon content and below this line in carbon content, the quench temperature rises that you should quench your steel at. And you can get heat treat information about any kind of steel out there under the sun just look on the internet and it wouldn't hurt to get you one of these diagrams and just study it <clears throat> everything you know above this eutectoid point is known as a hyper eutectoid anything below it is a hypo eutectoid I don't want this video to be too complicated <laughs> or uh, anything like that and blow anybody's mind but Basically, if you just kind of follow the guidelines of your charts that you can get online and hit it kind of close, like with 1095, the, the steel that y'all are using in the build along, it is right about here. And you'll notice that, that there's not a big difference in the quench temperature between um, the lower and the upper transformation temperature. The 1333 is what it says right here. I've always heard 1340. But that's the Curie point of steel. But uh, it looks like the upper transformation line is um, right about probably 1425. I've always heat treated 1095 at about 1450, 1475 to be honest with you. Uh, if you don't have a powerometer and you're using a magnet, just when you find out that it won't stick to a magnet, just heat it just a little bit hotter, not much at all, and then quench it. But anyway, I don't want to make this a long drawn out video, just give y'all a little heads up of what's actually going on in the steel. But uh, I hope this helps somebody out, and take care. Thanks.